Hello. Welcome, my divindies. Welcome. So um, I interrupted the collective shortcut because I had to go run some errands and I came back not like Miss Frizzle, but like Miss Frazzle. So, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> We're just going to have to roll with it, okay? <laughs> Texas weather is wild. It is so hot out there. I. This is one of the main reasons I don't leave my house, okay? I hate the heat. And I live in Texas, so the only solution, don't leave the house. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so anywho, um, thank you to all of those who have been subscribing. You guys already know you're my MVPs, but I'm also grateful to those who have been commenting, reacting, sharing, sending stars, subs um, not subscribing, <laughs> sending donations. All of those things mean a great deal to me. And I'm very grateful to all of you. Hold on. I can't turn this candle off. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What is the message for this collective? What is the message for this collective? Ooh, ooh, that was a lot. That was a lot. I, I think we're going to do all Oracle cards. So we've got let go of the old. We've got love without condition. We've got have courage. You were born to create and see the signs. And then the overall energy is see the truth. Okay. So I guess we're going to base this collective off of um, Oracle cards and then just go from there. All right. So let's start with see the truth because it's the overall energy and then we will work our way around. Number 39. And I'm going to call out the numbers because I don't know if these numbers are important to you. Maybe they have a, sig a special significance. So see the truth says do not be deceived. Be watchful and mind mindful of the illusions others weave around themselves and that you may weave around yourself. Know the night. Understand the shadows. See through the darkness to the light of the truth. Pay attention to contradictions. Notice when actions and words are not in harmony. Hone your intuition and insight so that you may know the minds and hearts of those around you and yourself and trust in the wisdom born of that awareness. Okay, so this is this is that energy of the more you are self-aware, the clearer your perception is of other people as well. So when you accept yourself, flaws and all, you're able to see other people, flaws and all, and accept them as well. I don't know why that's important, but let's move on. 22. So let go of the old says, are you holding on to beliefs and notions that no longer serve you? Are you blocking your own growth and forward momentum because you fear to end a chapter in your life? It is time to release all that you hold on to that no longer serves. It is time to say goodbye to all that no longer has a place or purpose in your life. It's time to have an emotional or physical spring clean. It's time to let go of the past so you can be open to what the future may bring. Okay. So whoever's holding on to the past, let me get my little spray bottle and be like, stop it. <sighs> 26. Let's see. <laughs> 26 is love without condition. Do you often find it easier to give advice to others whilst hiding from the truth that the advice you give is advice that you yourself neglect to follow? Do you find it easier to nurture others and show them kindness and compassion? It is time to be kind and gentle with yourself, to love you, strengths and weaknesses without reservation or condition. Nurture yourself, be kind to yourself, for you are des deserving of the same unconditional care and love that you give to others. So whoever I'm talking to, you may be the type that is really quick when someone else is going through a difficult situation. Oh, they need my support. They, they need my help. They, they need my uh, compassion. They need my care. But when you're going through something, you're like, I need a, I need a man up or I need to be a, a woman about this. 
you are very hard on yourself and you don't really accept loving yourself or caring for yourself. See, and the thing about this is, remember, see, the truth was here. It was the first card, it was the overall energy. So I feel like the more you do this, it means that you're not really being, um, you're not being fair to yourself. And without realizing it, when you're not fair to yourself, you're not going to be fair with other people. Because if you are um, holding yourself to some absurdly high standard, whether you realize it or not, you're going to be holding other people to absurdly high standards as well. Just how it goes. Number 14. Have courage. There are times when you feel small, afraid, and alone in the world, but you are not alone. You are watched over and cherished by Gaia and Great Spirit. Know that you have within you the strength to overcome all obstacles placed in your path, no matter how daunting or large they may seem. Have courage. Now is the time to trust in yourself and have confidence that you will overcome it all. Okay, so whoever today's collective is for, I haven't even finished with the Oracle cards. You're being really hard on yourself because there's something that you want to let go of. Could be a job, could be a career, could be a uh, lover or a friend or even a family member. And you're showing them a lot of compassion, but you're not really showing yourself a lot of compassion. So for example, let's say this is um, a friend who constantly takes advantage of your time, takes it, you know, disrespects your boundaries. And you're sitting there thinking, well, you know, I understand them because they've been through a lot. And you make up all these excuses. You're betraying yourself. I hope you know that. And I literally just saw on Instagram, which I haven't really been on Instagram lately, but lately, no, I don't usually get on Instagram. Lately I have been, sorry. Not that that's unnecessary. Um, <laughs> I saw this reel where I loved what this lady was saying. She said, when you betray yourself constantly, you will align energetically because you are used, so used to betraying yourself. You, are energe you will energetically align yourself with someone who will betray you so badly, it will teach you to stop betraying yourself. So don't do this. Whoever I'm talking to, you need to stop. Because if you keep betraying yourself, you're going to keep aligning with people who have no problem betraying you. Let's look at, because um, that's why I have courage is here, because it takes courage to step away from these things. It takes courage to say, you know what, I'm okay with that person thinking I'm a villain because I stopped letting them run, walk over me or abuse me. I'm okay with them thinking I'm, I'm mean now. If you protecting yourself is called mean, fuck that. But allow yourself to be mean. Let's read number 50. You were born to create. You were blessed with the ability to create with thought, intention, action, and emotion. Be conscious of your power and aware of what your actions and reactions create within and around you. Excuse me. Cherish this gift and use it in both a wise and productive manner. Create beauty and inspire a desire within others to do, this, to do the same. Create a future that both fulfills and delights. Do what you were born to do. Hmm. Whoever I'm talking to, you have people who look up to you. And this could be as simple as you have children watching what you're doing. You could have younger siblings watching what you're doing. Or you could be a social media influencer and people are watching what you're doing. You are influencing others through your decisions. So basically, if you show your children that betraying yourself is the thing to do, that's so what you're teaching them is the right thing to do. They will constantly betray themselves and then you will be heartbroken watching your children betray yourself. You'll be like, why are you doing this to yourself? And they're confused. I don't know. I just, I keep doing this. You taught them that. You created an environment that taught them this is the safe way to be a human. This is how you adult. You betray yourself. That's the thing we do. If you don't want your children to do that, don't teach them that. 
It's the same thing of like adults get so angry when children lie, but you're the one teaching them to lie, whether you realize it or not. Let's see number 38, the last one. See the signs, and I think this is interesting because we've got the, the same lion and dragon that showed up in the other cards show up here as well. We are often sent small signs in the form of synchronicities and coincidences. Be watchful. Do not overlook them in the everyday rush of life. Words, numbers, and symbols that repeat, animals and birds that appear on your path, people who come in and out of your life at odd or similar moments, and those flashes of knowing when you believe something will happen with every fiber of your being. These are all things you are meant to see and hear. Messages from Gaia and Great Spirit sent to aid your journey. So not only, hmm, not only is this, is whoever this collective is for aware, because they are aware that they need to let the past go. They've been receiving signs and synchronicities from the universe that they should let it go, but they're still struggling to do so. So let's get a little bit more details. Tell me about see the truth. We've got the child, okay. Overall energy, eight of water. The child speaks of like innocence, naivete. So with see the truth, this is somebody who I wouldn't say that I would not say that they're naive, but they're acting as if they are. This is somebody who has experience. And I said this to a client the other day, because you know how I do one on one shadow work sessions. And I was saying this to a client um, about my client was never stupid. They could see the same things everyone else sees. They just chose to believe that when someone was lying to them, they chose to believe it was the truth. It's the same thing. Children see things with an air of, I'm going to believe you. Even if they can tell that we're not saying the truth. They, they don't want to call you out on it. And whoever this collective is for is doing the same thing. Whoever they're around, that they know they need to release, they know that there's issues here. So much so that they've been betraying themselves to maintain this situation. But it's coming from this energy of like, I just want to believe them. I want to believe that they're a good person. But you know better. The Eight of Water, hold on, I forget what the Eight of Water is about. Mm. Eight of Water, gratitude, yeah, I figured, okay. Gratitude, appreciation, because that's what kept coming to mind. It's like somebody here is like, I just want to appreciate the effort that person is making. <sighs> so, let's say this is a friend, okay? And this friend and you have many years of history together and your friend has done so many things like maybe they've they've betrayed you at some point they've lied to you they've manipulated you but lately once in a while they say the truth and you're like i, I know i know that they still have a lot of work to do but you know once a month they say the truth i want to appreciate that Look, <sighs> although that is a, a very sweet approach, you're not being as kind as you think you are. You think you're being kind. This is not being kind. Because being kind is being able to be honest with another person. When you love someone, you respect them enough to tell them the truth. You honor them by being open with them. So when you know that someone is not being their best self and you're like, it's okay, let's just, let's just not talk about it. You don't love that person. Or you may think you do, but you're showing them love in the wrong way. 
Just like a, a parent who sees a child who always loves eating chocolate and they're like, it's okay, just let him. They think that this is showing them love. No, they're ruining their child. That child is probably gonna get diabetes really early. They're gonna have a lot of uh, tooth issues. It's gonna fuck up their health. You're, you're not showing love to that child. Same thing here. You're coming from that perspective of like, oh, I don't wanna be mean. But you're not being loving towards that person. It just, it is what it is. Tell me about the child. Let's see. <laughs> wow. Tell me about the child. Tell me about the child. Interesting. Okay. Look at what's the first card that came out. And now we're here, you know, yes. <laughs> it's, I love it when the cards are like, we agree with you, bitch. <laughs> Cause they don't always agree with me, but yes, they're saying yes. What I said is exactly what's happening. And then look at this changing came out reversed, which means you're not helping this person change. Because again, when you really love someone, you really care about them. You want them to be the best version of themselves. You don't have to be mean about it. Like I had um, someone I was really close to and they had the tendency of lying <laughs> and I don't like that. And so I would just say, while we were alone, I wouldn't say it in front of other people, but when we were alone, I would say, Hey, so <laughs> what's going on? But I would make it really gentle. Like, why do, why do you, why did you say that when you know it's not true? And I gave them a way out, right? I would say, is it because you're scared? Are you embarrassed? And then when I would hit the nail on the head, they're like, yeah, it's because I was embarrassed. Okay, that's okay. Being embarrassed is okay, but don't lie, girl. Like, <laughs> that's not okay because then I'm not gonna trust you because I'm watching you lie to other people. So you can tell someone the truth without being ugly, without being mean about it. But if you love them, you're going to be honest with them. You're not helping this person change. Whoever I'm talking to, you're not helping this person change. Appreciating that once a month that they're honest is not helping them. So we've got uh, Taurus energy still. Refinement. I'm going to pick up the words that st stand out to me. Refinement. Fine tune. Develops over time. Purify. Filter. Draw out. Cultivation. Which means that, yes, it's going to take time for someone to change. But it's kind of like, um, it's habits. We all have built-in habits, built-in behavioral patterns. So let's say that, <laughs> let's say that I'm around people. If you notice, I, I, I use the word fuck a lot, right? And other, other words. Um, if I'm around someone that I know that's very offensive to, I'm just going to try and stay silent as much as I can. Because I'm not trying to irritate other people with my manner of speech. But I'm also aware that it's a habit and that if I just act the way I normally act, it's going to come out. If I have to change that completely, that means that I consistently have to be reminded by other people, hey, don't use that. <laughs> oh, right. You know, it's like a, a consistent, you're helping them by reminding them. So they're trying to change a pattern. And when you're like, oh, they try once a month and you're not helping them, you're helping them by reminding them, especially if, excuse me, if this is something that they are actively working on improving, they'll be grateful that you're reminding them. If they're not very grateful that you're reminding them, well, they, they don't really want to change, do they? And when you remind them, you're basically highlighting what they perceive as their failure. So you can remind them in a very loving way. Hey, I'm, I'm, I know that you're doing great, but just, you know, reminder. And then we've got crack shot. <sighs> Superior. Intense. Target. Showdown. Accurate. Arrogant. So it could be that the reason you don't remind this person when they're in the wrong, sorry, it's hot, but I want to turn on the fan because then the candles go everywhere. Um, this may be somebody who does not take criticism well. And that's also something that you want to discuss with that person, because honestly, 
every human is going to be criticized. That's just, we're all imperfect. Nobody has uh, the personality or the, like there's people that are very charismatic out there. And so they're so charismatic that other people overlook their flaws. And that's, what, that's one thing, but that doesn't mean that they don't have them. So when someone sits there basically saying, you can't tell me nothing, that's arrogance, you know? And why would you want to be around someone like that anyway? I don't know. Overall energy, we've got to pearl. So this requires opening up, honesty, loyalty, diving deep, layers, and developing character. Again, this takes time. Developing the type of character we're proud of, it takes time. And if we really want to improve, then we should have no problem with the people around us correcting us. When we say, hey, I noticed I have this negative behavior so for example <laughs> i have a libra sun and a libra south node okay and my venus is retrograde in my natal chart so i used to be the type of person that was very um it was very difficult for me to stand up for myself it was very difficult for me to say no and i really struggled with that and i had a friend and we're still friends um she has a uh, virgo rising she's a leo sun a sag moon she's very direct and I made her promise, and she made sure with me. Every time she would make sure, are you okay with me telling you something? And I was like, okay, go ahead. Because <laughs> I already knew she was going to tell me you're messing up. But I also knew she was doing it because she loved me. And so she was very gentle, and she would make sure that I was okay before she would tell me, remember that, that conversation we had where you said you weren't going to do this again? Well, he just respected you. You allowed it. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. And so... I knew she was coming from a place of love and it helped me. It helped me to get to where I am now. And I love her for that. So if you truly want to improve and this person truly wants to improve, because I don't know who you are. You may be the person that doesn't want to improve. Or you may be the person that's dealing with someone else who doesn't want to improve. You may be both. It could be both ways. Because honestly, we kind of attract who we are. So let's see. Tell me about let go of the old. The balance between emotion and intellect. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? And the chrome. I could be talking, I mean, more than 90% of my listeners are feminine, right? But I could be talking to a feminine who is afraid of being cast out, afraid of being seen as the weird one. Let's read the emotion intellect card because I think that, that one is very interesting. I mean, they're all interesting, but particularly this one. Okay. This talks about emotion, intellect, love, fear, expression, suppression, head, heart, ease, and dis-ease. Influence of emotional disharmony, both love and fear motivate. Is fear the more dominant force? Unvoiced emotions must be expressed. Excuse me, address unhealthy imbalances. Suppressed emotion creates dis-ease. Seek a productive means of emotional release. Be proactive and mindful of your emotions. Excuse me. So, <clears throat> let go of the old. It may not even be a person that you need to let go of. What you need to let go of is a mindset. It's the way you see things. Because remember the, the card that said love and fear both motivate, right? But the motivation is, it creates different results. So for example, when, um, we're talking about the difference between jealousy and possessiveness. I think there's a huge difference. Most people don't think there's a difference. I think there is. I think that jealousy means that there's an assumption your partner may betray you. 
And possessiveness is when someone else is kind of eyeing your partner. You're not looking at your partner like your partner's doing anything wrong. You're just kind of looking at the person like, this one is mine. <laughs> to me, there's a difference, you know? It's, they're both coming from a place of fear, but I think one is more gentle and one is a lot more, it can be a lot more intense. Um, it can be a lot more detrimental in my opinion. Of course it depends, right? There's, each one of them has um, a spectrum. Let's put it that way, they're on a spectrum. So when you are using jealousy or possessiveness or any other toxic trait, right? And it's coming from a place of fear. I'm afraid this person isn't going to love me. I'm afraid this person is going to betray me. I'm afraid that, you know, I'll lose them. Those fears could be born out of love, but they could also be born out of insecurity. Just because someone has those fears doesn't mean that they love you. But just because someone has those fears doesn't mean they don't love you either. But you can address that. The problem there is when you place all of those fears onto your partner. So then um, you'll have a, a partner who, who says things like, I don't want you to dress like that. And we're like, why? Well, because I'm afraid that you'll attract the attention of other people. And? And that implies to them that you have more options. Then you could walk away from them. So it's this, then it starts turning into control because then they're afraid that you're going to walk away from them. So it could be love, but it could also just be their insecurity. And it, if unchecked, it could get really to where you start, you know, like my ex-husband, he hated the fact that I wore makeup. He hated the fact that I would dress up. He didn't like that because in his mind, I did it for him. And so once I was married, he's like, you don't have to do that anymore. And I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> when did I say I was doing it for you? I've been doing this since I was 14. For me, I'm a Libra. I love makeup. I love getting dressed up. It has nothing to do with you. You just enjoyed it. That's, that's great. But <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like it starts suffocating other people because your fear is overwhelming the love. Clarify emotion and intellect. Got Black Widow. Clarifying. Coin Toss. And Anam Kara. Overall energy, mirror. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about this. First card that came out, Black Widow. Betrayal. Twisted. Let's just read it all. Betrayal, warning, twisted, turncoat, cunning, danger, toxic situation or relationship. Web of control. Entrapment. Unexpected attack. Insidious. Poisonous and low vibration. You know, um, I had a partner who was very open, very transparent about the fact that they were afraid they could lose me. But that partner was also very careful because <laughs> they know that I'm like a Mustang. I'll take off running if there's too much control. Um, they made sure that their way of trying to make me happy wasn't coming from a place of fear. It was coming out of place of love. Like I'm going to love you so hard. Hopefully you don't leave. And we fell apart for different reasons, not for that. But that's a huge difference. You know, I, I'll never, nobody has ever measured up to the way that person loved me because that's how they dealt with their fear. They knew that their fear was there, but instead of trying to control me, what they did was like, I'm just going to pour everything I've got onto you and then we'll see if we can stay together. And that's a very different experience. It's a very, very different experience. So I feel like this situation here, whoever represents a child, might be dealing with someone who is a crone. Someone who doesn't really give a fuck about the way society thinks. Someone who lives life their own way. And it's creating this really twisted, toxic relationship because then the other person is like terrified of expressing, look, I'm not comfortable with that. Because let me be honest, okay? 
just because I'm a very independent person doesn't mean I can't change. I've had partners that, like I had a partner that I used to dress a little differently for, like I would make sure, I hated it, but I would make sure I was covered because that person came from a very conservative family. And my partner didn't tell me to cover up. I chose to do that because I knew that in his family's eyes, he would be disrespected by the way I was dressing. And I thought with time, we can have conversations, they can get to know me, and then eventually I can get, you know, dress however I want. But the point is, it doesn't mean we can't adjust to a partner. Not because they're worried about something, but maybe for different circumstances, we can adjust to them. So in this case, we have two very different people, a child and a crone. There could be a huge age gap, or there could be a big um, difference in the way that they've experienced the world. One person is coming from a very innocent, like lovey-dovey, <laughs> um, zippity-doo-dah type of energy. And the other person's coming from this um, almost a revolutionary maverick energy. And neither one is better or worse than the other. It's just that they're very different. And so seeing things from the other person's perfect perspective is going to be very different. And it's creating this really toxic, um, excuse me, I don't know what the, <laughs> anyways. It's creating this really toxic situation because the um, the crone could be looking at the, the child person like, you're stupid. And so the child person might be looking at the crone like, you're a little too, um, what's the word, jaded or cynical or, you know, they don't understand each other. And we've got coin toss, choices, either or, be fair, considering pros and cons, fate equal two sides to every story butterfly effect either way 50 50 chance unpredictable can't decide take a chance so every time that we enter a connection with another person it's a gamble it's a gamble because we don't know we might give everything we've got we don't know if the other person will do so or vice versa they might give everything they've got and we might not do so so these two people both feel like i'm right no i'm right no i'm right there's two sides to every story. Every type of personality has a pro and a con. Every type of situation has a pro and a con. So it has more to do with let go of the old means that sometimes there are situations that we just know, look, we're just not gonna work. We're really not. Now we are looking at Anamkara. So these are soulmates unconditional love romance uncommon bond devoted always tenderness timeless constant affection best friends appreciation unchanging infinite love so i feel like this is the the perfect example of when i say there's there's a difference between having unconditional love for someone and having to accept unconditionally everything that person does that's the difference so I can love someone unconditionally and still say, but your behavior hurts me. So I'm going to limit access to me. I still love you, but I can't have you around me all the time because it affects the way I love me. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like these two people are trying to say, no, no, no. See, unconditional love means whatever they dish out, I have to take it. No, sir. No, ma'am. That is not what unconditional love is. Because let's, let's put it into perspective, okay? Let's say parents. Parents are one of the most clear indications of unconditional love. Parents, honestly, my mom and my dad, although right now they don't really speak to me because, you know, they don't approve of what I do. Today, I got a phone call from my mom and she was in tears because someone that I knew growing up, someone that was around my age, he had a heart attack and he died. And it just reminded my mom that regardless of age, somebody could pass away. And so she was like, she just needed to hear my voice. And that made me cry. I'm a cancer rising. I cry, right? I'm a sap. Because I love hearing my mom's voice. But we both have to set boundaries with each other. I know that they love me. But I also know that the way we both live our lives means we can't really coexist peacefully. We can't because we're such opposites. Does that mean we don't love each other? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. It means that we're just very different. And this is proof. 
this situation here, someone here is trying to say, no, if I love them, I have to be able to live with them. I have to be able to give them everything I've got, even if it hurts me. That That's when it gets toxic. Because imagine, which I'm not doing anything bad, you know, I don't feel like I am. But let's say I was a, I was a, someone who was struggling with addiction, with either alcoholism or, or something like that. And I forced my parents, because you're my parents, you have to love me unconditionally. And then I destroyed their home and I destroyed their finances and I destroyed their life. But because they're my parents and I brainwashed them that they have to love me unconditionally, they, they keep throwing all their resources at me trying to heal me. I'm the only one that can heal me. Do you see what I'm saying? So unconditional love does not mean unconditional acceptance of that person's behavior. And whoever I'm dealing with here in this collective does not understand that yet. And I've seen that in the comments too. When I've talked about this, people are like, no, unconditional love means I'm going to wait for them forever. Unconditional love means, yeah. And for those of you who are like, um, you're a little too judgmental, only a hit dog hollers, okay? So if the shoe fits, by all means, wear it, boo boo. That's right. I'm calling you out. Obviously, what I said hits you. So, not sorry. And then we've got mirror. The overall energy says self-aware, seeing clearly, ego, facing issues, self-assessment, self-improvement, insecure, make comparisons, reflection, obsessed, narcissistic, vain, self-love, self-appreciation. So <laughs> this is a reminder that when you're sitting here saying, well, see what happened is. I have to love this person unconditionally. What you're really doing is you're patting your back. You're like, oh my God, aren't I such a great person that even if they hurt me, I'm still here. I'm taking it because I love them so much. That's not, no. Stop, stop. I'm grossed out a little bit. That does not make you special. That means you don't have a backbone. That's what that means. Become self-aware. Look at yourself in the mirror. Be very clear with why you're holding on because a lot of that is coming from fear. You're coming from this place of, I don't want to lose this person. I don't know if I'll ever find another friend again. I don't know if I'll ever find a lover that I click with this, like this with, et cetera, et cetera. It's coming from fear. I just realized where I'm going to stop here. We're going to move to part two because this one's getting a little longer. I know it's going to be over an hour, so I'm going to split it. So I will see you guys on part two. That one will be on the subscriber side. So I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.